Hey everyone, good evening and welcome to the last day and the last session of the Literature Festival, the Lit Fest by the Literary Mirror 2023. Hope the three days and all the sessions were as interesting as, and of course this would also be that interesting as all other sessions. So today we have with us Purva Grover from Dubai, who is a poetess, a journalist, a novelist, and uh, who runs a digital magazine, who is even a theater artist. Uh, so many, so many things she does in, uh, in one, like so many things in one person, yeah. Uh, she's even a TEDx speaker, uh, award-winning playwright, and uh, she's spoken as, as word artist, and she's creative educator and entrepreneur. Whoa, really too much. <laughs> so many things you do. <laughs> How do you manage? First of all, uh, first of all, thank you so much for having me. And I hope yeah. the festival has been a huge success. And it's uh, it's wonderful how all of you, the entire team has brought everybody together. Uh, how do I manage so many things? Because uh, I think the common connection between everything I do is stories. Mm -hmm. So I just like to tell stories. Now I tell them in different formats and across different platforms. So it's technically the same thing, but it's narrating the story in a different, different. way. Sometimes it's on theater. Sometimes it's on theater, which is a mm -hmm. stage. Sometimes it's uh, it's in a school that I turn into a creative educator. Sometimes it's through writing books. Sometimes it's through running a magazine. So it's actually just one thing multiplied into different formats. Different formats. <laughs> Wonderful. Storytelling is itself and uh, art, definitely. And we, uh, in fact, uh, all of us, be it any part of uh, the world, are habituated of hearing stories right from the childhood. And anything childhood. told in a good way or a story format registers in the mind and uh, ultimately becomes the behavioral pattern. Okay, Correct. we start with your uh, stage director and award-winning playwright. So writing a play plus writing a novel or a book is very different. So would like to know something about that play which you uh, for which you are awarded and what is the difference between this two? So uh, incidentally, the play that we are talking about is uh, one of the short stories from my first book called The Trees Told Me So. Oh. So it has one story. Yeah. So it has one story in it, uh, which is called Between Us, Mother and Daughter. Mm. And that is the play, that is the short story that I later converted into like a playwright, like a script. And then we presented it on the stage and we performed it um, in India. We won awards there. We performed it in Dubai. We performed it in Sharjah. It's a very hard hitting story. What is the, I won't reveal to you what the story is about, but yeah, it's, uh, it's to do with the, yeah, it's to do with the, it's to do with the cause. It's to do with violence against women. And uh, like you said right now, very clearly, Kosha, that, you know, once you tell a story, it registers in the mind and it becomes part of us. Mm -hmm. So the whole idea of writing that story was to talk about, you know, violence against women in such a way that people remember, people attend to it, people are aware of it and people stand up for it. And the same idea was then later translated into a play, because if I was to go to a group of people and give them a lecture on violence against women, probably we would have not made the same impact that we did when we presented it in the form of a play. So it's a theatrical education, something that we call theater for a cause. Hmm. Uh, there is, of course, a huge difference between uh, writing a story and then presenting it on the stage, uh, because now when you know, when you read a book, you you just travel into any world that you want to travel. Mm -hmm. So I might say that Kosha is wearing something which which is pink and black and white. Now, my pink, black and white could be very different shades from your pink, black yeah, and white. But, <laughs> yeah. So that's so then it's a lot is left to the reader's imagination. But when you watch a movie or when you watch a theatrical production, then, of course, we are creating the world of imagination for you. So there is a huge difference there. So the story was written... Um, in a narrative format and it is it is narrated by an eight-year-old girl when we changed it and we presented it on stage we actually added more characters to it mm. and instead of just having one voice we just got two actors on stage so it's performed by two people and they at different points of time play different roles sometimes mm -hmm. it's the mother sometimes it's the it's the one who's committing the crime and then of course there is a child so the whole idea was that you convert and you diversify 
uh, that one voice and that one story being told through different characters so it's definitely different but it was a wonderful new experience for me as well i used to perform uh, theater when i was in school and college that time i used to act now of course i don't act i only write and direct plays so mm-hmm. yeah so i'm very happy being behind the scene now but yeah it's a good experience it's a good learning exercise so you have more other such plays with a social cause which you continue yes. Yeah so all the plays that uh, I have a small team of actors who I work with here and all the plays we do we it all falls under the category called theater for a cause okay. so because again uh, it, it goes back to the same thing that you tell a story and then you make a larger difference hmm. so we have performed plays on uh, you know violence against women this one we performed plays which address the issue of terrorism we've performed plays which uh, address the issue of uh, breast cancer Mm-hmm. so everything we do falls on essentially under the same bracket mm-hmm. we make sure that the audience we have the audience attention because now we are uh, making you know like it's theater and it's education and entertainment so we are actually combining all, all of it and yes and we are making a far larger difference because without the audience realizing because all the plays that we've performed in the last few years everybody just remembers how it affected them and they still talk about it Mm. so you you touch a social cause to hey but you touch even the taboo topics which people you know yes. it happens all around us but they hardly want to speak uh, or think about it so you touch those kind yeah, of yeah that's topics. yeah we okay. i essentially try to touch a lot of those topics because i think uh, you know and as authors uh, it's one it's our responsibility Mm. to be able to talk about things that a lot of people uh, find taboo but probably have difficulty in addressing mm. and i think we are blessed and fortunate if we've been given the skill to you know voice our opinion about certain things and certain issues we should definitely make the most we of it definitely. wonderful wonderful line and wonderful thought even wonderful take away i guess from the session that if we have a voice <laughs> we should use it uh, for yeah, the other correct. people But if okay. you've been TEDx speaker, so I guess the topics would be again the same related to social cause, or was it something different? So the topic was uh, related to a social cause, but more like related to the current times that we are talking in, which I believe is a social cause. So my topic was incidentally called um, hashtag um, I am not a hashtag, basically. Acha. So I am a uh-huh. I am a I am a female. I am a female. I am not a hashtag. that was my topic and uh, it was beautiful because i was addressing a group of uh, young minds this was in this has been in various schools and uh, i wanted to i wanted all the young minds especially the young female minds to remember that what happens is that everything that happens to women actually turns into a female documentary it turns into a news item it turns into a headline it turns into a hashtag and somewhere in the entire process we somehow forget that we are actually talking about a real living individual here mm-hmm. so the idea was that yes of course we are in the world of social media and definitely use social media to the advantage to spread word to spread noise to connect with other people i think social media is absolutely phenomenal but somewhere be- between we should know when to draw the line mm-hmm. and we should remember that the people we are talking about so every so the topic address various such things that you know every 8 minutes say a rape happens in india and that becomes a headline but mm. it's actually a female it's not just a headline i am mm. not a topic of a documentary i am Always. not a mere topic i am not a mere topic of a headline i am not a mere topic of uh, a film being made on my subject i am not a mere taboo i am actually an individual so while the idea was to tell the youngsters that yes you have the power of hashtags you have the voice just use it in such a way that you can address it in the right way have the right conversation use social media but use it in the right way mm-hmm. when we're talking about social media another topic which affects me is uh, uh i'm talking gender neutral right now uh, we are says uh, i have another friend okay uh, and we are used to calling each other with the nicknames be it uh, uh, fatty or uh, something like that any such nickname yeah. now we are habituated of facebook and social media to put up our things and in that social media if i called my friend with that nickname my friend would not have a problem but the third person others will will have yeah. exactly they would they would take okay this is body shaming but for us it's not a body shaming for us it's very normal 
again male i'm not talking about particular male or yeah, 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 yeah. i'm talking gender neutral so uh, how do we address uh, this thing like wo char log kya kahenge wali baat ho jati hai wahan pe hum ko koi problem nahi hai and then uh, because somebody else has pointed out definitely i and my you become conscious exactly the she uh, she or he will think ki acha uh, yeah this is correct and then it it, it uh, creates a rift between us two so uh, how do we address this I, because you took out I that think topic you just, I, yeah <laughs> i think you just address it you know in life not just in social media but in real life and in virtual life you should know to cut out the noise that you don't want hmm so you have to simply cut out the noise that doesn't gel with you and i think it's a good uh, it's a good time to have this conversation it's the end of the year a lot of people make a whole lot of old resolutions exactly. exactly i would just say i would just say that in real life and in virtual life just surround yourself with those people those hashtags those instagram handles which bring happiness and peace to you you are not here to please everyone uh, not everybody is meant to like you not you are also not meant to like everyone yeah. and so just just be confident in who you are just follow your own path and just cut the noise which brings you trouble hmm. that's it just be just switch off from that noise hmm. which starts yeah, affecting just off from that noise yeah because you cannot see you cannot like they say you cannot change the world but you can change yourself changes so yeah. it is not yeah so you cannot uh, go around educating the world you cannot go around explaining to someone what is body shaming or what is not body shaming i love these terms are uh, suddenly a vocabulary has become um, mm. so large and we <laughs> we are suddenly <laughs> we are suddenly you know we are like suddenly offended by everything while it's right to be exactly we are suddenly offended by everything exactly yeah. exactly but i guess just pick your battles just pick your battles hmm. things may be very you. normal and we we make it a huge deal acha ye ho gaya wo ho gaya are kyu it sometimes seems that social yeah. media creates a pressure of taking everything to heart in a negative Correct. way sometimes it happens that way of course it does <laughs> yeah uh, wonderful okay uh, wanted to know about your book it was the year 2020 is it something related to the pandemic or what it is yeah hmm. so it was the year 2020 is my was my second book and uh, it is something that i wrote during the pandemic it's a very short very very short tiny read it's an e book only because at that time there was no uh, printing and right. publishing happening and um, i primarily wrote it for myself i guess because i think the world was changing around so quickly and uh, you know like all our senses were getting affected in different ways and i wanted to keep a record of how we were changing in good in ne- negative but most importantly i wanted it to be recorded because public memory is very short Hmm. while there was the pandemic there was this whole conversation how and how the world is becoming going to become a kinder place and mm-hmm. we're going to be more human about everything but look how fast we moved on yeah yeah we're not, we're not even sanitize we're not even washing our hands and sanitizing correct correct it's, it's not that there are no longer germs in the world there's no longer virus in the world but i think the whole idea was to record it in such a way that i and uh, we all of us look back at it and know this is what had happened this is what it had taught us whether it was good or bad or negative let's not forget it so soon mm. let's learn the lessons from what nature taught us or a combination of various elements taught us okay. so it's a book written in that yeah it's a book written it's something called a fragmentary novel so mm. a fragmentary novel is something that you can just uh, you don't have to read it in one go you can read fragments of it and develop it kind of a coffee table yeah. book uh, not a coffee table book but uh, because not a coffee table book would have would probably have very uh, less of text hmm. uh, but it's a shorter it's a shorter novel it is it was brave it was a brave book to write because uh, purely because it was written on the pandemic it was released during the pandemic and it is about the pandemic about the pandemic so it's yeah so it's basically made up of different elements when i say fragments that you can read different elements of it in isolation or you can read the entire book in one go Hmm. Okay. Same thing. Yeah. Uh, I had my second book release in the pandemic, which is called Tales of Twenty Twenty. Oh, wow. 
Uh, so oh, congratulations. Also, <laughs> thank you. It is also the same kind. I, I didn't call it a fragmented novel, but it is also short, short stories, uh, which you can read individually. Right. Yeah. One, two pages. Right, right. Happy experiences. Somebody had tough experiences during the pandemic. So, which I heard, right. saw some imaginative that I have mentioned. Yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. I'll definitely read your book. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're talking about uh, social media, we're talking about social cause, which you do, which you write and which you uh, play at the theatre. One thing uh, I would like to ask uh, about the mental health, okay, which is no more a taboo topic. People are talking about it, people are aware about it, but somewhere or the other, uh, you know, uh, we, we have become overwhelmed or over over informed about these things that it is creating a kind of pressure. You have to think of yourself, you have to take care of yourself, you have to uh, let go, you have to forgive, you have to forget, you have to be in that, uh, sometimes you have to be in that thoughtless, zero thought uh, stage of mind. So more than giving a cure or a, a comfortable place, it is creating a social pressure that if I am not doing this, I am having some mental mm. problem or I may not get, I may have some mental uh, problems. My mental health will not be good. Is that true? What are your views on it? So I think uh, just like uh, it's, it's the same for everything. It's not just mental health. Like you said that because we are overwhelmed with so much information, mm. we have content around us all the time, whether it is social media, whether it exactly. is Netflix or any. So we are spoiled for content. We are spoiled for exposure. Uh, we are connected with right now while we are, you are in India and I am in Dubai, we are connected. So we are connected yeah. with just so many people and so many voices that yes, we are getting overwhelmed. So what happens is that, uh, unfortunately, I hate to use this word, but a lot of people suffer from FOMO. It is the fear of missing out. And you are, you are on, you're just joining the race, whether it comes to mental health also, or whether it comes to everything else. You want to be seen at a certain place. You want to be eating certain things. You want to be doing certain things. But just like everything else, yes, of course, now if we are living in the world of social media, but at one point of time, I'm sure when we were growing up and, uh, Say we were we suddenly got internet for the first time. I'm sure the parents, our parents, felt the same about it because they had grown up in a different era where uh -huh. they would go to libraries and have newspapers yeah. and magazines, and then they suddenly saw us connecting to a modem and going to going on the internet, um, even if it was just to Google or just you know a Hotmail account or something. So I guess every generation has its own uh, overwhelming stages mm. of content. But then every generation also learns from it and every generation finds the sensibility to uh, maneuver. Mm -hmm. The world, of course, is very noisy. It's very busy. It's very crazy. Yeah. And yeah. It's, yeah, it's it's natural for anyone. You know, like I meet five-year-olds who tell me they are stressed. Huh. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> and, <laughs> really? Uh, you know, we <laughs> know what stress is. But I guess it also becomes fashionable uh, to say certain things. Uh, but there is an advantage and there is a disadvantage to any any platform. Yes, mm -hmm. of course, there are a lot of people who use the word mental health and uh, because it's fashionable. But mm -hmm. because like you said, it's no longer a taboo. Mm -hmm. I guess it's also opened doors to a lot of people to be able to come out and say, yes, I have a problem. Yeah. Just like I have pain in my ear, I have pain in my, uh, you know, my I soul have, is hurting yeah. right now. Yeah. yeah. So it's good. It's a, it's a good and bad. But again, it's it's the best of what we make. Mm. we have we have like i said turn off the noise if if something it's like you know you're watching something on netflix and you don't connect to the movie nobody is forcing you to watch it mm -hmm. you can just switch it off you can there are certain off. elements of you can just switch it off of course you have to be okay with that you have to be okay with not being a part of the race you have to yeah. be okay yeah. Being, yeah and then you'll probably so if suppose social media is not for you and me then we will probably come across and connect with people who are like-minded mm -hmm. and our world, our world in itself will have so much that we'll probably not even know what's happening. Mm -hmm. For instance, I'm not on Twitter. I'm not on TikTok. I'm ne I've not never downloaded the app TikTok or a Snapchat. So I don't know what's happening there. So if, when I don't know, I, I'm not fear. I'm not afraid exactly. of what's happening there yeah. because I, I can, I cannot be everywhere. Exactly. I'd rather be there more present in my real life. And of course, I also want to be present in social life because 
that's the only way to stay connected with a larger audience. You cannot ignore it. Correct. And what about you said you have a younger one, five-year-old. Uh, I have a younger one. No, no, one. it's not my... It's, it's not, not my five year old. It's yeah. It's some. It's I'm saying because I work a lot with kids okay. and a lot of kids come and tell me uh, that right. oh my god, Purva ma'am, I'm stressed. I'm like okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, poetry. Your book on poetry. Uh, sorry, your the so first... my, my book is so my first book is the tree. The story. tree so told it's me. A series yeah. Of short, yeah. yeah, it's a uh, series of short stories. Correct. And okay. uh, the common connect between uh, all the short stories, there are 11 stories there. And the common connect between all the stories is the tree. Because I feel in some way the trees told me the story, hence the name. Mm -hmm. And in, oh. in a nutshell, it's about love, life and loss all tied up. It's about a realization that how your life is actually revolves around trees, but you don't realize it. So, you know, when you get... Um, when you are very young, you probably use the tree, the bark of the tree to play cricket. Mm. And that's your wicket. You probably uh, give your clothes to, it, the, the stories are set in India. So you probably give your clothes for ironing to a laundry man, a dhobi who actually sits under a tree. You, as you grow older, when you get married, you get hina on your hands, which is also then something come from the tree. And when you die, at least in our culture, you put on a bed of wood, yeah. which is a funeral pyre, which is again a tree. Okay. So each of the 11 stories deals with different emotions, different individuals, different stories set in different parts of hmm. uh, different parts of the country. Hmm. And it just makes you realize that um, you have been, your life has been touched by trees in some way. Hmm. Somewhere or rather the tree is, or rather you entire life is a part of a tree cycle. Yes. Virtually. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, and how hard it is to get the uh, books published and market, promoting it. Uh, is it same like <laughs> Very India hard. and Dubai? <laughs> so my, uh, no, so my books have not been published in Dubai. Dubai doesn't have options for traditional publishing. Dubai mostly has just vanity publishers sure. and um, it's, it's, it's the same everywhere. It's very hard. You know, I used to think when I used to write a book, and which is what I tell a lot of uh, authors now as well, that uh, you're writing a book and you think writing a book is tough. Then you start editing it and you think, oh my God, writing was easy. Editing is tougher. Uh -huh. But then you realize that finding oh, a publisher, one, and then marketing the marketing. book is actually very, actually. is actually the tougher. Because your book may be very good. It may be sitting on your desktop. It may be printed in it, may be sitting on your desk. But unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, uh, for most of the publishers globally, you are just one of the many authors. You are just one name in the Excel sheet. You have to do a lot of work. You have to go out and talk about your work. Uh, not be ashamed talking about your work because a lot of us who are creative, uh, we do not know Arashi. how to market. Yes, exactly. Yes. We do not so know we how to. We are very shy. Yeah, so we are very shy when it comes to selling our own books. We are we are just used to being in our own creative zone, but unfortunately, unfortunately, also you have to wear the business head, you have to wear the marketing head, the PR head, you have to be seen. Okay. So yes, it's very tough, very very tough. Yeah. So it's okay. like that. Just a second, I I need to sure. Uh, uh, sure. Uh, just just a moment. Yeah, give me a minute. Okay, sure. Okay. Yeah. And the third book, She, again, a fiction book, uh, what it is about, like which genre it's been. So she, so she is actually a nonfiction. It's not a fiction. And she is a book, which is a celebration of what it means to be a woman, hmm. minus the male bashing and minus the feminism. There is no male bashing and no feminism there. Oh, it is just uh, a conversation. Oh. It's just a conversation oh. about what it means to be a woman. And it's a celebration of an individual, which in this case happens to be a, a, female. a female. It's all the conversation. Yeah. So it's just a conversation that you and I will probably have, you know, mm. when we meet over a coffee or we, when we are having mm. a Zoom call mm. like this. So we'll talk about careers. We'll talk about children. We'll talk about periods. We'll talk about marriage. Okay. We'll talk about everything under the sun. Any conversation the two women will have. We'll talk about getting old. We'll talk about bad hair days. We'll talk about, like I said, should we have a career? Should we not have a career? And all of that. 
so it's a book which um, is written in a very fun workbook kind of style mm-hmm. uh, because my idea is that i want every wo- every woman to work with the book mm-hmm. and i because you i've written in the book that um, i do not understand feminism and um, i most of the things that i don't understand are feminine in fact mm-hmm. and the book is uh, is one that uh, reminds you that you know you never stop being a woman it's like being on a treadmill you actually start from the same place every day but you still keep moving mm-hmm. so that's and and there are different chapters in the book and there are these the book is written like i said it's in a workbook style so it's written in a way that every woman who's reading it is working with the book so at some places i have given space to the women to scribble down their own thoughts mm-hmm. and then at some place i have told women that okay i know while you're thinking about your thoughts I also know that you are always multitasking so you're probably thinking what do I need to order for grocery today is there milk in the house so it's absolutely fine if in between scribbling your thoughts that you're having a heartbreak you also write order milk and eggs mm-hmm. because that's how our life is that's and the nice. last chapter of the book and the last chapter of the book is actually empty because it says to be continued to over to you Oh, because wow. I write, I want every I want every woman to continue writing this story, and it's quite beautiful because a lot of women are actually writing the chapter and exactly. they are scanning and sending pictures after this. Yeah. So sweet! I will definitely purchase. It's available on uh, in India, right? Yeah, it's available. Yeah. Every, yes, it's All available over. everywhere. Yeah. And what a way! What a wonderful idea to leave the last chapter blank so that the story doesn't yeah. end. It it goes on. A person. Yeah, because it doesn't end. Yes. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. end. It shouldn't end. Wonderful. Correct. Okay. Okay, we have ten more minutes till the uh, Zoom sure. meeting ends. So tell me about the digital magazine, the Indian Express, plus your poem, uh, poems which you have written. Okay. Something about it. Both the things. So, uh, the Indian Trumpet is a digital magazine uh, for Indian expats. It's something that I launched in two thousand thirteen. That's when I became an Indian expat when I moved to Dubai. and uh, i wanted to uh, stay connected to of course my world of journalism and i wanted to stay connected to india while living in dubai you actually feel you are living in, in india itself it's pretty much close to home and a lot of indian population is there so the magazine is a celebration of the color culture and chaos of india and mm. we celebrate uh, different different interesting themes very very quirky magazine we ha- we have an entire edition which is on the indian cow we have an sure. entire edition on the indian toilet the indian achar sure. the indian ma the india the indian fan so we celebrate all these quirky nostalgic items uh, elements of being an indian we have an edition which is an indian uh, made special an mm-hmm. indian middle class edition so that's a magazine um, yeah we continue to run it now we had put it on hold for some time in between because i was occupied in telling stories in other formats we brought back the magazine now and wow. our latest edition is an is an indian pani puri edition in which we are celebrating <laughs> all oh, the wow. all the various <laughs> elements of yeah so that's the Funny. indian one mm-hmm. and uh, i'll tell you uh, the other question is that you asked me about poetry so i will actually tell you a little about uh, my next book which will be, which should be out sometime mm-hmm. in next 3 to 4 months maximum it's called incidentally it relates to everything we were talking about social media and hashtags So my next book is called Hashtag I Could Have Been an Insta Post, oh. and it's written in a po it's written in a poetic manner, and it's about all those things that you actually don't see about in on Instagram, because mm. when we all come on Instagram, it's all about the good moments in our life, it's all about our holiday pictures, it's all of us us pouting and looking good and having our morning coffee and all of that, and I wanted to somehow during the pandemic I realized that it was very important to change the narrative. and it also important to kind of you know make people realize that you can if you can talk about the very good moments in your life it's okay to talk about the not so good moments also because life is not always pink and rosy life is a mix of life black white and gray so this book um, kind of is writ- is designed in an instagram friendly way and mm. uh, yeah it's called hashtag i could have been an insta post and mm. um, i hope a lot of people pick it up purely as a reminder because you know it's possible that instagram also uh, as a platform doesn't exist after few years so mm. it's also it's going to be a reminder when we we'll yeah it's possible so when it's also going to be a reminder that there was a time when we were obsessed with this platform mm-hmm. and our lives revolved around it and what did we do of it mm. so that should be out in a couple of months now 
Wonderful. We'll look forward. And maybe you're right. The next generation uh, will have this kind of uh, stuff to look overwhelming information. Achha, there was something called Instagram. So, yeah. Correct. And before we end the session, do you want to say anything else which we may have missed? No, I think we covered it all. Thank you so much for such interesting questions. It's Thanks always uh, it's always interesting to have fresh conversations. Yes. And uh, I hope that, you know, I wish all of you all the best. And I hope we can use words to make a good difference. Yeah. And yeah. Just, yeah. And uh, Thank you so please much. give your social media handle where people can connect with you. Sure. So my website is purvagrover.com, which is my full name, Purva hmm. Grover. And hmm. my Instagram handle is purvagr, P-U-R-V-A-G-R. GR. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank it you so much. Thank you so much. Thank okay. you. Have a great evening. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So guys, this marks uh, an end to the literature festival. We'll see you next year with some more interesting people and more interesting session. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.